Yup. Finish. Oi. All right. Oof. There we go. We're on. Ish. I think it's at least too warm for people to be uh, indoors. Can't see the screen. Just me and Enosh. Come on, Mel. Come on, Mel. Look. Hina Solanke's here. Hello. Hello there. Don't say anything different. My neck is severely white. I can't type quick enough. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tina. Yes, my hairdresser's like that. I need to slap the back of your neck a little bit to make it less white because it's very, very pale. That section there, look at that. Look at that. It's the different colours of the rest in the body there. That, look at that. You can't even see it on here. Haircut, yes. New hair mill. Finally, we're there. Finally, this time you are correct. There was new, it's not new hair. The same hair on my head as I woke up with this morning. He looks different. Oh yeah. She right here, she was laughing. She cut the first bit and went, Ooh Lord <laughs> She went, Ooh, there it is. <laughs> the first thing she said was you got a bit of a tan. After she went, you need to go out there and get that back of that neck done. After this I'm gonna go out there and just go get some tin foil and just put it on my neck. <laughs> we will see you next time we're gonna laugh, I've got like a silver cone on. Look how long my neck looks without hair. <laughs> I've got a really long neck when I don't have hair. Have you else noticed that? I'm like a giraffe. Meepa! Have you eaten, my friend? Looking beautiful today, Meepa. I saw your pictures. Have you eaten, my para? Meepa, do you think I look really. Like, look how long my lips look when I don't have hair. It's very weird. Right. <laughs> oh, the small things in life that suddenly make you very, very happy. Right. Coach Helen for Fit Studio, let's get us on. Ah, I did this one of who is responsible for success, uh, which is quite an interesting uh, topic. It's, it's come out a lot, actually, in the last, um, God, God, actually quite a while, the last couple of years. Um, oh yeah, I'm like, Heather's just a help, help, Mel. <laughs> I am Mel. I know. I I can't, <laughs> I can't manage hair anymore. When you're just a pony so it's quite easy, isn't it? I already spent a lot of time flicking my hair. <laughs> Heather's like this. Ooh, comment, quick. Yes. Well, Heather comments about what we know she's going to comment about. Um, okay, so this is what I'm going to go through. I'm going to go through. <laughs> hey, fancy lady. I was hoping you were going to come on today, Heather, and I could leave it as a surprise for tomorrow and go, hey. Hi. A bit of that. <laughs> with my really long neck and I've got no hair. Uh, <laughs> I'll get back on I'll get back on topic. Uh amazing that your hair cut after lockdown when it feels like you're like a like a new woman, like a new giraffe right here. <laughs> um so how I'm gonna go through it is just say when this happens, right, when responsibility seems to be passed from pillar to post. Um what I mean by why it happens, uh you know how it goes. What by how? So what is it? Well, I'm talking about um, responsibility and success. Um, I'm talking about uh, primarily, and Sam has touched on this before a long time ago. It's like, gosh, I think it's about two years ago now. There's three stages to losing weight. Uh, stage number one, and generally corresponds with years as well, by the way, I found from experience. Being up now in year three, I can literally see it as a coach when, when transitioning through uh, me working with clients, I've definitely got my first year clients be like, yes, second year clients, we'll get to them. Third year clients, mm. right, so first year clients, first year of losing weight, uh, stage one, stage one clients, stage one clients love life, they literally love life, uh, they generally um, thrive for the first year, uh, feel fantastic about the result, um, they'll get a fantastic result, um, it's so good, like the, the first year is shiny and new, stage one they have, um, it's relatively easy, right, I've talked about that, it's relatively easy, um, 
their momentum is high, uh, they feel fantastic. Uh, and then stage two happens, and it generally corresponds with year two, I have to be honest. However, stage two is where um, essentially becomes, well, that's called the plateau. <laughs> what we call it, stage two client is a client who um, is plateauing or isn't finding it very challenging to lose weight all of a sudden uh, for no apparent reason. Um, and stage three client has triggered the reason why that's happening, moved forward and changed all those things. Now, you know, this is a recurring theme we're talking about um, when we do my uh, lives or podcasts. So generally speaking, those stage two clients um, are experiencing some mindset shifts or challenges, uh, which really create the plateau and not actually something myth magical or mythical or, or the weight loss unicorn stopping you in your tracks. And most clients can probably um, say to themselves, right, I'm a stage one client. Actually, I'm still on the early stages of my journey. It's all very shiny and new. I don't foresee any challenges. I'm doing really, really well. Uh, stage two clients will generally not potentially see they're in stage two just yet. <laughs> stage three clients will definitely know they're there and they're usually like a third year client, third or fourth year client um, who's mastered everything. They are masters of the universe, right? And when we talk about responsibility, I'm talking responsibility in this sense, uh, responsibility comes in stage two, right? Um, and why does it come in stage two? Um, because of the biggest challenge being mindset, when it gets to, to a stage two client, responsibility gets buffered around like ping pong. Um, and we've talked about this a little bit before, but I want to be specific about where in the journey and what stage in the journey this happens in. Um, because this is a, bit, I had a very fantastic uh, coach comment on this quite recently a couple of weeks ago so it actually brought it back into the limelight a little bit um so generally when you get to stage two again repeating some other things where responsibility goes it comes when the roadmap doesn't quite fit where we think right we should be in a particular point in time now instead of looking inwards generally uh, a client will start to blame others now being specific with that they will start to blame the process or the coach it happens, right? Something in their head doesn't work. The only thing that can make any sense, it's not their mindset or how they're thinking about something. It, it is actually the coach. The coach is not working for them. The process is not working. It becomes a blame game, right? It becomes a blame game of who's responsible. It's not me. Um, <laughs> so who's responsible for success? Um, what's really happening is a, a lack of action and blame, right? Uh, and, and the way I heard it say by this coach is like, I could do the workouts for a client at the end of the day. I could do the workouts of a client and be the healthiest I've ever been in my entire life. I could lift the heaviest weight. I could run the longest marathons. At the end of the day though, I'm already healthy. I don't need to do it. So either, either someone chooses to do it. If I do it for them, they won't feel the benefit. The rewards will be my own. If I have to do it for someone, the rewards will be my own and not theirs right so in terms of this is going to be a relatively short one because i've talked about this before but the way he said it was blinded right he said at the end of the day i could be doing the workouts i could be doing the nutrition i could be eating fantastic i could be doing every workout in the book running the london marathon and i would be the healthiest fittiest fittiest person fittiest person fittiest person in the whole of the land however the responsibility of success is not on me when somebody is looking outside themselves in that stage, that stage two of the client, saying that it's it's not my responsibility, something has gone wrong, the program stopped working, or the the coaching method has stopped working, or the, the formula has stopped working. That's where they will look to others to take responsibility. Um, and often, right, why, and you guys will know this is if you work with us, really, that we'll change. We'll always keep changing tactics. We'll always keep changing. Uh, to adapt to an individual, absolutely. However, the coach is still not responsible to take action for the client. I always say it, I always explain, role of the coach. Role of the coach is to support and be a guide, like your sat-nav. Great sat-nav, if you lot here, yeah. However, I'm not driving the car for you. If I drive the car for someone, I'll go on my own journey and tell them, trust me now, I'll be having training twice a day. <laughs> <laughs> eating far less, going for runs, I'd be brutal. If I was driving the car for you, I'd be going over the Rocky Mountains and everything else, just, just for my own entertainment, because that's how I like to train, that's how I like to do my food. But that isn't my journey, right? <laughs> isn't my journey. So the thing is, is that when there's responsibility being passed, there's also uh, fear, uh, well, not fear, but failure and success also being passed over. 
Now, if the client um, client often does succeed, um, it also works the same way. They'll always say it's the coach's responsibility. Or they say to me, "Joe, you know what, Helen? I wanted, I wanted, uh, you know what? It's all down to you." And I'll say, "No, because I didn't do it for you." Right. So it works both ways when clients talk to me, when they get success and when they don't. So if a client doesn't do the actions and doesn't do something, I'll say, look, I'm not doing this for you. I'd love to work out as much as that. And I will. I won't feel the benefit. Well, you won't feel the benefit. I'll feel the benefit. You won't. The same way a client says to me, it's fantastic. I want to, uh, you know, it's all on you. I'll be like, <laughs> I didn't get you out of bed and get you to the studio. I didn't sit you down and make your food for you and then literally I mean I could get her to do that for me I quite like that personally I'm a personal chef likewise it works both ways the only person responsible for success is yourself when things aren't going the way you like to do again on the roadmap that's when we look at others and say we'll look outside and say actually what is it now the how is it being responsible yes I've talked about this on previous lives Is looking within and saying, actually, if I know the route I've taken, if I know I sat out on this journey with my coach, and actually, to, to be fair, this is this is feedback as well, and this is honesty as well. Sometimes a client will go on a, on a particular course because they think it's the only one. They will think, they will perceive that the coach is driving right for them, that the coach is going to be responsible for everything. And it's part of a coach's role is to make sure that's set up and responsibilities and lines, etc. are drawn in the sand and said, well, no, actually, look, how am I going to keep you accountable to it? Not do it for you. I can keep you accountable to this all day long. I can ring you, call you, FaceTime you, look for your letterbox. Done them all. It really has. <laughs> I can play the accountability game all day long. Ultimately, though, I'm not going to sit you down in a, a, a chair, strap you down and force feed you. Or physically march up and down and move your limbs for you like a like a puppet <laughs> got a really bizarre image there i'm not going to physically do that because the only person that's going to feel the benefit and the reward is you i could have it all day i'd love to it's not it's not what i look for it's not what i need as a coach it's, that's not what i'm here for i'm here for you guys to feel the benefit of the result and the reward doing the work, looking at how we can change the direction. Because if if the, if the you are going on a route, and this is for existing clients as well, if you're on a route right now, right, because we're in a very transitional position again, yay, Lester, <laughs> go us. We're still in a transitional position. So it might be actually the route which you were taking a week ago or four weeks ago might need to change. And now's the time to speak to your coach and say, look, actually, the direction we need to go to so we remain accountable, I remain on path, the remain the goal I want needs to change now. And we need to discuss that so they do continue rather than get to the point where I'm not getting result and I'm looking at, at you going, oh, I, why hasn't the coach changed anything yet? Why why hasn't the coach, what, why haven't they seen that this isn't working? It's a two-way street. I actually, I'll welcome it. I'm like, please tell me Please tell me what I can do. If something, if I'm not doing enough or I'm not doing what you need, I, I want you to tell me what value I can bring to this experience for you. What what can I pick out on the route for you? What can I show you on this journey that's going to help you become a success, right? Because so often, I, and um, I don't know. Sometimes I see I see before and afters of some some of the places, and I think uh, the first thing I think is that that person has done so much work. So much work. So much. The credit belongs to an individual, yes. Like I know the support system through us is fantastic, we do that. But actually, part part of this is us as a coach bringing that out of you, right? Supporting that. Making that possibility. I half was like, shall I come in with a wig on today so nobody knows about it? But I can't hide it. I won't wash this now for four days, you know this, don't you? Because it's like, can't wash it, it looks too good. Because it'll never look like this when I do it. <laughs> Tell you what, having your hair blow dried in this heat in a conservatory with all the doors open still didn't help because it's just a hot air coming from one door in through the hair dryer and out through the other. 
that was hot. <laughs> I don't recommend it. <laughs> right. Recap, because anyone's got a, a huge time on this, because I'm making my point on this one. So, phases of weight loss, and you can all put yourself in these phases. You will all be in one. Either you're on that first phase of, woo, this is amazing, I love life, I have no challenges. This weight is dropping off with ease. Second stage, things get hard. Things get challenging, not easy. Don't want to do it. Not losing weight. What's changed? The formula hasn't changed. The coach hasn't changed. The studio hasn't changed. The met class hasn't changed. Heather hasn't changed. Nothing's changed. The only thing that's changed is mindset. Stage two. Things slow down. Plateau. <laughs> the dreaded plateau hits. Like the unicorn that dances in the room. There's the plateau. There it is. Not losing weight. Something's wrong. Something's wrong with this process, studio, the coach, it's often the coach, it's on the coach, coach isn't doing something, coach isn't talking to me right, coach isn't challenging me, coach isn't training me right, okay, stage three, stage three is when we get past that and kind of look internally and everything else and start to make some mental changes and see what it is that's actually causing the stick, um, now, yes, I know it comes out of frustration, uh, it becomes a blame game in that stage, stage two. It becomes a blame game. It's still the responsibility of the individual. Right? Someone says it's not working. I'm gonna, we could say go back to the start. Don't get me wrong. We have talked about going back to the start. Let's set, let's set this all over again so you feel like in stage one. A client was always, always wants to go back to stage one in this, by the way. Rather than change their mindset, they want to magically and mythically go back to stage one and go, it's all dropping off me again. I just have to only eat one banana a day and train four hours. I wonder why I didn't maintain that. But actually, when you say it's not working or it's a blame game or it's somebody else's fault or um, it's just not for me anymore, it's because what's happening is a lack of action and blame. Okay, so blame game is uh, it's just not working for me. Uh, something's happened to my body, can't do anymore. Yes, no. Um, the thing is, as I say, like, and I heard it from another coach. God, I, feel, I can't, wish I could tell you it was. Um, <laughs> I, I heard this coach say, so I could do all the workouts in the world. I could eat all the food. I would be in banging shape. I'd be ripped as hell. I would get the rewards. The rewards would be mine as a coach and not my client. While someone says it's on my coach, the coach, the coach is saying, well, I'm not doing it for you. Right. And I said it's two way street. When a client gets a result. It's fantastic. Right. A client might say, and you, if you said this to me, you know, I do. I'm like, I'm like, I say it in knee jokes. I say, Gerald, this is all you. I'm like, no, this is, this is you. I didn't force you to do the workouts. I didn't force you to eat the food. I supported and helped and guide you, challenged you appropriately. Right. The success is on you. The responsibility is on you. Equally, if you choose not to do the training and you choose not to do the food, I'm still here to support and listen and guide you and help you. I still won't do it for you. <laughs> Heather's like this, do it. Do all the training. <laughs> no, I would die. <laughs> oh, I do feel considerably lighter. I think I should weigh myself now I've had my hair cut. Uh, quite a lot of clients talk about that. I get, when I get a haircut, I'm going to weigh myself. I'm like, I, I actually physically feel like my head is lighter, like it could float away because there's no much hair attached to it. <laughs> And that who is responsible for success of a haircut? My hairdresser. She's a ledge. We'll wait that woman until forever. So if you're rocking your, your uh, still rocking your lockdown hair like Heather and Hina, or uh, it's okay, ladies, the time's coming, I promise. It's a good feeling. I can't lie. It's an amazing feeling. Whatever you're doing this evening, rocking lockdown hair or, or rocking your cut, cut hair in this beautiful hotter than Portugal and slash Ibiza weather. It's too hot to get out there. Um, enjoy whatever you're doing. Uh, have a fantastic day. If it is for Eid for you guys as well, which for some of you it is watching and listening, enjoy every single moment. And I will catch you tomorrow. Ooh. Oh, it's the Inner Athlete Day tomorrow. Inner Athlete. Fantastic. Join me for that one. Uh, until then, latest.